And I'm going to show you, uh, I just added something to it there. So you can take a minute to copy that down if you want. You may not need to. You could look at it later online if you really want. But um, again, we look at this as like 8a squared minus 8a plus 1, right? So it's like a quadratic that I would be solving um, like any quadratic like we did back in grade 10. And if I do b squared minus 4ac on this, I believe I get 32. So what does that mean? Yeah, so it means it's solvable. That's important. Some people think, oh, it's not solvable. No, no, it's solvable, definitely, right? Um, if it was negative, it's even, it's solvable, but in the complex number system, which we don't do in this course. So it's, sol it's solvable for sure, but not factorable. That's what b squared minus 4ac tells us. 32 is not a perfect square, so it's not factorable. So I have to use the quadratic formula. Note on the side here, if I was doing this top one from grade 10 the eight with the a's, then quadratic formula would say a equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But now it's 8 times sine x all squared minus 8 sine x plus 1. So it's sine x equals. So like even though this is a lot of what we did in, in um, grade 10, and it's just kind of solving quadratics, and quadratic formula is everybody's best friend because it always works really easy. But there's a couple little steps where you could make mistakes, but just a couple. So there are little tricks that we have to watch for. So we're going to do two examples to practice those. Uh, so we're going to get started on this, but that's really the first one is make sure that we know that it's sine x equals, not x equals. And there's a big difference between sine x and between x. And oh my gosh, make sure you get the quadratic formula right. If anybody gets that wrong, that's really terrible. Can't afford to get that wrong. So make sure you've got that memorized properly. Don't take for granted. Oh yeah, I knew that back in grade 10. I remember it. Really make sure when you're doing the work that you've got it memorized. Okay, so that being said, let's do it. Sine x equals negative b, which is the negative of negative 8, which I wouldn't normally write. I would just put 8, but for the first time, we'll, we'll do it the whole way. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 8 squared uh, minus 4 times 8 times 1. So negative 8 squared is 64 minus 8 times 4, which is 32. 64 minus 32 is 32. All over 2 times a, which is 8. And the nice thing about, again, using b squared minus 4ac to check if it's factorable or not is if you end up using the quadratic formula, half of it's already done for us, right? Then we just go straight to 8 plus or minus the square root of 32 over 16. Okay? Okay. You could move on to the whole next step of the question here. You, you are not required. Yes, go ahead. Okay. You are not required to do this next part, but it's a good skill to have, so I'm going to do it. And I would encourage you to do it, in particular if you're taking calculus or in particular if you're shooting for a high mark. This is something that you did back in grade 11, so you should know how to do it. We're going to simplify this fully. The only small benefit is when you go to put this in your calculator, there's a little bit less to type in. It's slightly smaller numbers. And if you end up sticking in your calculator a couple of times, uh, which you might, you know, maybe you save some time. How do I, but the, the thing is, how do I reduce square root of 32? So I got to look for root 32 is equal to, I look for a perfect square factor in 32. The biggest one is the best, so you get it all done in one shot. And I write this as 16 times 2, because 16 times 2 is 32. And then we use this uh, important property of radicals that the square root of 16 times 2 is equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, right? So that's a property. It's not true of all things, but it's true of multiplication and square roots. So we can do that. Uh, and the square root of 16 is 4, so this is equal to 4 root 2. So that means that 
This is equal to 8 plus or minus 4 root 2 over 16. And I can, I can uh, simplify this even further because every part – remember what we did when we did this. This – like we did this in identities, but I'm going to simplify it a little bit. 4 plus 3 over 8. And people want to do this. Change that to a 2 and make this, I guess, 3 over 2 or something like that, which is not because it's 4 plus 3, which is 7. It's 7 over 8. It's definitely not 3 over 2. People want to do that. You can't because you're adding on top. But here I'm adding, but I have a factor of 4 in every part that I'm adding. 8 has a 4 in it. The 4 obviously has a 4 in it. And the 16 has a 4 in it. So I can do this. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So this is root 2. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now, some people might remember this as being like factor out a 4, 2 plus or minus uh, root 2 over 16, and then cancel the 4 with the 16. So if there's a factor in every part, then you could do it. If that was 4, you could. In fact, I don't know why you would because you just add them together. But see what I mean? So it's different. So this is, this is not necessary for this. You don't have to show this step. You can get to the final answer by skipping this. But it's a good thing to push yourself a little bit, challenge yourself to be able to get that right. And like I say, having a smaller uh, expression here is a little bit better. Okay, so now we have two possible answers here. So we're going to split this up. So that means sine x equals 2 plus root 2 over 4. And sine x equals... equals to minus root 2 over 4. We split it up into two different parts. And there's a couple of reasons why I am actually going to punch this into my calculator and write down the decimal answer. You don't even have to write it down. I'm going to for the lesson. Now, you probably want to make sure that you can do it on your calculator so you can try with me. I, the, you could use brackets for the top, but I go 2 plus root 2, and then I hit equals. And then I go divided by 4. And this gave me 0 0.8536. This is still sine x. This is not x. This is sine x equals that. And then I do 2 minus root 2. And I hit equals just to get the top part done. Then divide by 4. And in this case, I got 0 0.1464. There's two, maybe two and a half kind of reasons why you would want to do this. Okay? And I'll talk about all of them as we go, but right now it's not apparent. So it's not obvious yet why we would do this. So let's just move on. So what's my next step? If, if I know sine x and I'm looking for x, what do I do? Thank you. Shift sign or inverse sign. And what's that going to find us? It's going to find x related... So I got to go back and put that other one in, 2 plus root 2. Maybe you do that all at once, right? Divided by 4. And when you have it on your calculator, that's when you do shift sign. You could do that to save yourself a bit of time. And I got 1.0229. This is one of the reasons why you want to have this done. Sign is positive. That means my answers for X are coming out of quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Like we're still doing that, right? That hasn't changed that it's still, there's two possible answers when, when sine will equal that in quadrant one and quadrant two. So take my word for it because I've already done this. X equals one point, this is the quadrant one version and the quadrant two I would do pi minus and 2.1188. Okay, so I got two answers, but that was just for this. Now I got to go do it for the other one as well. So I go back two minus root two equals divided by four equals. That gave me this answer right here again. And for this one, I get another X related and I go shift sign equals and I get 0 
set, uh, no, one, four, one, four, seven, zero. And again, that one was positive. So my values for X are that one for quadrant one and for quadrant two pi minus, which gives me 2.9946. Four answers for that one. Four possible answers because it's quadratic and it just worked out that two of the quadratic versions were fine and then because it's sine, each of them had two. So four possible answers, get used to that. You have to do the X related step and then find your actual answers. What if one of these was negative? That's fine. Sine is allowed to be negative. That just means you're in quadrants three and four. So one of the reasons why we, um, we want to get this value is so I know if it's positive or negative so that I know if it's in quadrant one and two in this case, or three and four. And also if it's negative, when I do shift sign, I don't put the negative in to find the related angle. I don't think there's an example in today's lesson that's like that, but in the work there is. So if that trips you up, ask about it, but be careful, I'll say it again. When I evaluate this step, if I get a negative, before I go shift sign on my calculator, I have to do something about that negative. So I would multiply it by negative one just to get rid of it. So you don't have to round anything. Keep it in your calculator, multiply by negative one, then do shift sign. Otherwise you confuse yourself and you'll probably get one of the right answers and the other one will be wrong. All right, let's try one more. What's a little bit different about this one? Well, it's got stuff on both sides and it's got a cos and a sine. It is not linear where we put uh, all the junk on the other side. And it doesn't look to me like it's gonna be a common factoring one. So it looks like it's gonna be a quadratic with an identity replacement. So let's move stuff over to the left side. I get negative two sine squared X plus 10 cos x minus one equals zero. So we almost always set it equal to zero unless you're doing a linear. And remember I said yesterday, people mess that up. Those common factor types, people don't set it equal to zero. They try to get one on one side and one on the other and do something like that, that's never gonna work. The only kind that we don't set equal to zero is the linear. Okay, so we set this equal to zero. Can I replace cos x with some kind of sign? Good, no you cannot. We don't have an identity for that. We only have identities for sine squareds and cos squareds. So I can replace the sine squared with one minus cos squared. So negative two times one minus cos squared x bracket plus 10 cos x minus one equals zero. And I'm gonna multiply through and rearrange a little bit here. So I hope you can go with me. Negative two times negative cos squared x is two cos squared x plus 10 cos x, and negative two minus one is minus three. B squared minus four AC. See, I always do it off to the side and I write it down because I'm gonna need it anyway. Not, whoops, therefore factorable. No, I meant to say therefore not factorable. Ooh. 124 is not a perfect square. So this is not factorable. Huh? And so cos x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times C over 2A, which is negative 10 plus or minus root 124 over four. And I believe 124 is 31 times four or four times 31. So I can change this to four times 31. I wouldn't even normally show that step 
whoops. Uh, so it's 2 root 31 over 4. Oops, be careful there. That's a negative 10. And again, I hope everybody's okay with this because I know this is something that not everybody's super familiar with, but I'm going to divide 2 out of every part. So this is negative 5 plus or minus root 31 over 2. And like I said, that's just good practice. You could, go, you could go back up to this step and punch that into your calculator if you want instead of simplifying it, but simplifying is nice. When I punch this first one into my calculator, I get 1.2830. Uh, I can tell by inspecting that that it's going to be <coughs> positive because I know that the square root of 31 is bigger than 5 because the square root of 25 is 5, right? So square root of 31 is going to be bigger than that. So when I do negative 5 plus something bigger, it's going to be positive. Like I can tell that, but I think it's just as easy to punch it into your calculator. And then this one works out to negative 5.2839. So what happened there? Um, is it like the opposite way? No, because we're not at the angle yet. We're not at the angle yet. That's what it would be if it was the angle, Lucas. Uh, you have to... When you do the inverse, you have to take the negative out. Yeah, so the negative is important to notice. That that's what I was saying before. Try it, though. Try shift cos of 5.28. That's not going to work either. Remember, cosine never gets that big. So this one's no good. This one's not possible. We saw that yesterday. There's no solutions from this part. We're only going to get our solutions from the other part. Okay, and again, punching this into my calculator, I'm going to go through this quickly. Uh, oh, I've got something written down wrong here. Hold on. Let me double check these numbers. Negative 5 plus square root of 31 divided by 2. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. One point, that wouldn't make any sense either. Sorry, this should be 0 0.2839. And this one is the one point. 2830 and cosine that's positive cosine so that is in quadrants 1 and 4 and this one works out to 5.0002 it's fine if this number is big cuz this is an angle I know this is so confusing for some people. They don't like you're you're going through the steps and you're getting right answers, but sometimes you still don't fully understand what it is exactly you're doing. These x's are angles, right? So it's fine if that's big. That could be anything. Could be positive. Could be negative. Could be whatever. Except it's not going to be negative because it's zero to two pi. But right, it could be anything. These up here are not angles, so there are more restrictions on them. 